Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Immunizer Education. Um, continuing talking about uh, graphs of trigonometric functions. Today is tangent. Um, I do have notes, obviously, on unizor.com, so um, I think you, um, you will be much better if you will review the notes, try to, uh, to construct these graphs yourself, and then watch the video um, where I'm trying to do basically the same thing. <clears throat> All right, let's just start. Tangent, function tangent. Uh, first of all, this is a function which is odd, because as you remember, the definition of the tangent is sine over cosine. So let me just draw the graph. Now, wherever um, cosine is equal to zero, we have an asymptote, which is at pi over two. and 3 pi over 2 on the period from 0 to 2 pi. And period is actually from 0 to pi because the function repeats itself. Um, so it goes from minus infinity through 0 to plus infinity and again from minus infinity through 0 to plus infinity, etc. So, the length of the period is pi. That's the tangent. And I would like to start with this function and then draw all the different graphs which we which, which need. Um, so, important is that this function is odd because sine is odd and cosine is even. So, sine changes the sine when the argument changes the sine. Cosine of the argument does not change the sign with argument changing the sign. That's why the whole ratio is changing the sign. So its periodicity is pi, less than one of those. Each, each one has a periodicity of 2 pi, but combined together, they have pi. And that's basically how graph looks. Asymptotes at every pi over 2 plus pi plus 2 pi, etc. Now, Let's go through examples. First is tangent of minus x. So if argument changes the sign, odd function is changing the sign as well. What does it mean, basically? It means that if point A, B belongs to the graph of the fun function tangent, which means tangent of A equals B, then point minus A, B, which is symmetrical to this one relative to the y-axis, belongs to function tangent of minus x. Because if I will substitute instead of minus, well, I should say y is equal to tangent of x minus x. And if I will substitute minus a instead of x, I will have uh, and b instead of y, I will have b is equal to tangent of minus negative a, which is a. And I know that this is b. 
So again, with every point AB which belongs to this graph, there is a point minus AB which belongs to this graph. Now, this point is symmetrical to this relative to the y-axis, and that's why the whole graph would be symmetrical to this one relative to the y-axis, so it will go like this. So the red one is y is equal to tangent of minus x. Okay? Now, start from the beginning. Tangent of 3x. Again, I basically repeating the same thing again and again with, uh, for, for, for each trigonometric function. If point AB belongs to this, then one third AB belongs to the graph of this function. Why? Because if I will substitute one third instead of x, I will have tangent of three times one third times times a, which is tangent of a, which is b. So I will have a correct uh, equation. So with each point of this graph, I have this point, which is closer to the zero along the x-axis. So it's like squeezing towards the y-axis along the x-axis. It's three times closer. So the whole graph will be squeezed. Uh, which means that instead of, well, let me just draw it from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2, which is, which is the period. So my initial graph is this. Now I will squeeze it three times, actually, so it would be from... minus pi over 6 to pi over 6, and the shape will be the same. And obviously repeated every, the length would be pi over 3, right? So the next would be pi over 6 plus pi over 3 period is what? That's uh, 2, 6, that's 3, 6, that's P over, okay, P over 2. Okay, so the next would be P over 2. Etc. So the whole graph would be squeezed three times. So instead of big waves, or I don't know, I whether it's waves or not, big curves or widespread curves, I will have I will have narrow spread curves, and that would be the graph of this function. Next is. reverse operation. Instead of multiplying x by 3, I will divide x by 3. And for obvious reason, the graph, instead of squeezing by the factor of 3, will be stretched by the factor of 3. So, again, if this is my initial graph from minus p over 2 to pi over 2, and that's my initial graph. That's my tangent. Now I will stretch it three times. So instead of p over 2, it will be 3, uh, three pi over 2. Sometimes I'm saying p, sometimes pi. But that's the same letter. I should actually use the red one. 
So that's a symptom. And uh, here as well, somewhere here or something. So instead of this, I will have this. It's stretched three times. So the period instead of pi would be 3 pi. In this case, it's from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. In this case, but in, in this case, uh, original one is pi, minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. And this one is from minus 3 pi over 2 to plus 3 pi over 2. And then repeats every 3 pi over 2. Next is I'm multiplying not the argument, but the function itself by 3. For some reason, I consider this an easier exercise when I, when I multiply the, the function itself uh, instead of the argument. Uh, I, I don't know why, but it seems to be easier. Just every value of the function is increased three times, right? So if original looks like this, And this is tangent from minus p over 2 to, to plus p over 2. Then the new one would be stretched vertically up and down by three times, which means every value of the function will be increased by threefold. So it would be something like this. It's steeper. Actually, that's what it means. It's three times steeper. Well, in my case, it's not really three times. To get it more of a three times would be something like this. I don't know. Well, drawing is unimportant. What's it, what is important is that every segment from the original graph to the x-axis is supposed to be three times higher um, when it goes to the red line. All right, so that's easy. Now, how does this look like? All right, I think I have to change something. pi over 2 minus x. Well, let's just think about it. There are many ways, actually, to approach this. Um, first of all, what we can do is we can transform it into tangent of um, minus x first, and then tangent of minus x minus pi over 2. Two transformations. From original function, we transform original graph into this, which we have already done once. So let me draw the solution. So it's a reflection relative to the y. So instead of this, it will go like this. That's my tangent of minus x. Now, if I am adding or subtracting something to the argument, as we know, it shifts the graph, in this particular case, to the right by pi over 2. Why to the right? Well, because, again, it's obvious if point A, B belongs to a tangent of minus x, then point a plus pi over 2, b, belongs to tangent of minus x minus pi over 2.
if I will substitute x, uh, substitute a plus pi over 2 instead of x in this formula, I will get minus a. So I have to transform this graph by shifting it to the right by pi over 2. Now, this is minus pi over 2, and this is pi over 2. So, by shifting it by pi over 2 to the right, I will get this. That's my graph. And then it repeats left and right by periodicity, which is equal to pi. Okay? So I transform twice my original graph of the tangent to get to this particular one. Now, next is a combination of everything we have, each, we have done already. Minus one third tangent of minus 3x minus 3 pi over 2. Okay, what's the steps of transformation which we can achieve this um, graphic? Minus 1 third. No, let me just start without minus third. So it's tangent of minus x, then tangent of minus 3x, then tangent of minus 3x plus pi over 2, and the third, and then minus one third of this tangent of minus 3x plus pi over 2. So that's the sequence of transformations of the graph which I have to do. All right, so let me start. Um, tangent of x, again, you know, tangent of minus x is this, minus pi over 2, pi over 2, x, y. OK, done that. Then I multiply my argument by 3 which means the graph is squeezed in. So instead of pi over 2, I will have pi over 6, right? That's this one. Now I have to shift by pi over 2 to the left. So this point 0 will be somewhere minus pi over 2. Okay, so it would be something like this. So zero would be at point minus pi over two, and on the left and on the right would be pi over six. So if I go from minus pi over two, I subtract pi over six, that would be what? Pi over 3, right? Minus. And if I add pi over 6, I will get, wait a minute, pi over 2 minus pi over 6 is equal to pi over 3, right? So this is um, 3, 6 minus 1, 6, it's 2, 6, right? And if I add, I would have 3 plus 4, it would be 2, 2 pi. Right, 2 pi. So this is 2 pi minus 2 pi over 3. So the period would be from minus 2 pi over 3 to, mi to, to minus 2 pi over 3 to minus pi over 3 with a zero point at minus pi over 2, and then repeat it every uh, period times. 
which is pi over 3. Period is pi over 3, obviously. When we are shifting, the period is retained. Now, finally, I have to multiply it by minus 1 third. What does it mean? Well, it means that this particular graph should be number 1, reduced every, every origin, it should be reduced by the factor of 3. So it would be something like this. But then there is a minus here, which means it will be inverted, and it will be corresponding with this. So that's the final shape of the graph. And then repeat it every uh, period, and the period is equal to P over 3. That's it. Okay, what's next? Next is a combination of two different tangents with two different uh, arguments. Well, in this case, we just have to draw this graph and this graph and add them together. Well, let's try. So, Let's start with minus x. Uh, so it would be something like minus pi over 2, uh, pi over 2. And since it's minus, it's this way. And then repeat it every pi. By the way, the periodicity is the same as this one, pi. Because this function has a periodicity smaller, because this is a squeezed in, so it's pi over 2. But since this one is still pi, so the periodicity is maximum of these two periodicities. So now this one will be squeezed in tangent uh, x. Now, tangent x is from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2, but tangent 2x would be from, mon from minus pi over 4 to pi over 4. We already spoke about this. So when we are multiplying by 2, it means that the graph is squeezed in to the zero point along the x-axis. So instead of this, I will have this. And then it repeats itself. Which means it goes this way. And here. So now, let's choose one particular period, which is, let's say, from minus p over 2 to pi over t, to, to pi over 2. So let's wipe out this, wipe out this, so it doesn't disturb too much. So this is the period from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. Let's add these two graphs together. Well. Let's talk about the points where um, we have asymptotes. One graph is 0, another is plus infinity, so we will get the function result is plus infinity. In this case, they are doubling each other. But now, this one is asymptote as well. So the function will be somewhere from here, down here, and then go up again because now this uh, is equal to infinity. Now in this case, on this side of the asymptote, well, it obviously minus infinity. At some point, um, at some point, it might actually, yeah, at some point it will reach zero. Now, but this is minus and this is plus, so we are subtracting, so it goes something like this. to infinity again. 
And here, now this is asymptote as well. This is plus infinity, and this is a final piece, finite piece. So it goes this way. And finally, in this area, we will get something similar to this, but on the negative side. So it's something like this. So this is how the function behaves inside the period. And then it repeats itself. So basically, the next would be something like this, this, and this. That would be the next period, both ways. All right? And uh, the final problem for tangent is tangent x plus tangent x plus pi over 2. OK, let's do it again. Function tangent, well, basically, these two functions have very similar graphs, but this one is shifted by uh, pi over 2 to the left, right? So. Let's start with minus pi over 2 plus pi over 2, and this is tangent x. Now, well, let's just do it again, because we are shifting. Now, we are shifting to the left by minus pi over 2, which is this distance. Um, so the next graph would be, this is minus pi, this is 0. So the next would be this. This is shifted to the left by pi over 2. And now we have to add them together. Basically, it doesn't really um, matter where exactly we will do it, but let's just do it whatever we have drawn, basically. Um, now, well, let's start from the right to left. Now, here, this function is uh, this having uh, an asymptote, and uh, and this function so this is tangent x and this is tangent x plus pi over 2. All right, so um, let's consider on this interval, for instance, okay? So here we have minus infinity and zero, so the result will be minus infinity, and then it goes up, 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 and here we have a plus infinity on one function and zero on another. So basically the graph will behave like this. Now here, we have a, a, a similar situation. We have one graph is minus infinity, another is zero. So if we add them together, it would be minus infinity. And then it goes through zero, and then it goes up again. So that's basically the way how the graph would look like. And what's interesting is, it looks like its periodicity is actually pi over 2. I mean, pi is obviously a period, because tangent has a pi as, as a period. But in this case, periodicity is pi over 2. It would be interesting to prove it, by the way, algebraically, using the definition of the tangent, uh, sine over cosine. But most likely, that would be true. So that's the graph of the tangent plus tangent with the shift. 
Um, okay, that's it for today. Thank you very much. Uh, so we covered well. We covered lots of graphs: sine, cosine, tangent. Um, I will continue these lectures with uh, cotangent and uh, secant and uh, and cosecant. Uh, and uh, and then there will be some calculation problems. Uh, never a second of rest. All right. Good luck, and uh, I, I would recommend you to re-examine. Uh, to lecture again and graphs, try to do it yourself and then compare with whatever I did. Thanks very much and good luck. <laughs>